out there. Get your double double. Oh, yeah, Keep your bad. stick on the ice. We got Tanner the Bulldozer Bozer out here again. He fought less than a month ago, wow. taking on Rafael Pezoa. And I'm excited for this one because for Rafael Pezoa, you know, it's a change of opponent, somewhat short notice. You got Bozer just going back to Fight Island, going from Bonneville, Alberta, over to Yaz Island once more. And again, there's a lot of things to really look forward to because. For Tanner Bozer, on the same card as Marie Screen, they both called each other out. They both wanted the fight. You thought you were going to get it, but you don't. And for Pizzoa, he's a guy that, on the regional scene, had a lot of knockouts, had a lot of finish wins. In his first fight in, he gets finished by Cyril Gaunt. That's going to happen. Can't tell but I, I do have something interesting to say about that because that's a former common opponent with their UFC competition. So Pizzoa comes back out, fights Jeff Hughes, frustrating fight wins a good decision there but jeff hughes in the ufc i know he's lfa heavyweight champ hasn't looked all that no. good for tanner bozer and we're going to get into the nuts and bolts and the numbers of this one for tanner bozer fought great competition on the regional scene whether it was m1 global acb had the fight against gone he came into the ufc with a decent head of steam but a lot of name recognition and maybe you didn't know him outside of canada he was a unified champ here but you know that is what it is Everybody remembers him from his last fight. You're only as good as your last fight. And holy smokes, was he ever good against Felipe Linz. And Felipe Linz is a guy that... A millionaire. De decent grappler, millionaire, former PFL champ. Got finished at middleweight by Vadim Nemkov. So take that for what it's worth. Don't show that in the promos. But in the UFC for Felipe Linz, a lost Arlovsky, you know, training partner at ATT. And then he comes in against Bozer. He was laid on his feet. He didn't look as... Yeah, well, okay. He looked physically a little bit better than he did against Arlovsky. But he didn't look all that good. Bozer, wabash, finishes him like the surfer dude. And he looked great in that fight. And the thing for Bozer, the two big things before I let you go, great leg kick. Awesome leg great kick. Day. He's been one of the OGs. And I know, calf kick, leg kick, it, it's kind of the hot thing to say now. But Tanner Bozer is a guy that's really employed it well throughout his career. And the other thing is the combinations for Bozer, mixed in with that overhand right and that power, it's something special. And he's a guy that... If he fights like a Shamil Durkimov, if he fights a Marcin Tabora, if he fights even a Gusto Sakai, that might be a fun fight. To calm down right now. But he's going to have these fights where he can grind on you or he can throw the power. He can do a lot of things well. I really like Tanner Bozer. And here's the other stat that I wanted to throw before I let you loose. Tanner Bozer in the fight against Gon, he, he lost it. He lost the decision. It is what it is. He, he Gon lost went. By heel hook. No. Pazoa did. My bad. Gon in that fight. Wasn't able to take Tanner Bozer down, and, that and I impressive. think that's really important. No, I I couldn't agree more. Tanner Bozer before the Lids fight too, he was seen more as a decision guy at the heavyweight division. Heel hook was Dante Mays, but continue. He was no more as a decision guy at heavyweight. Not really a guy who's going to go out there and just blow the doors off you with his power like Francis Ngannou, kind of guy who can go those three rounds. You can compare him to a Marcin Tabora type fighter, but he's quite a bit more exciting than Tabora because Tabora, he's going to do really well for those first two rounds, be that wet blanket, really employ his game plan. And then the third round, just do enough to not get finished and then hopefully win 29-28. That's just kind of the Marcin Tabora game plan at this point. Tanner Bozer just keeps a really nice output throughout all three rounds, something that we don't really see all that much from heavyweights, especially... Guys were starting to move their way up into that top 15. Not saying if he beats Pazoa, he will get a number next to his name, but he is starting to kind of get towards them because we both thought after that gone fight, and not really us, just a lot of people thought after the gone fight, that was two of your better prospects at the heavyweight division. So the winner of that kind of rise to the top and the loser who really knows what happens. But Bozer really showed that Linz fight. And against a guy who, yes, we haven't seen the best of Linz in the UFC, but a guy who outside was the PFL heavyweight champ. Like that does mean something. I know in the PFL, I've given them a hard time before in the past because Ali Abdelaziz just owns everyone over there it seems but uh Linz was able to get that million and then Bozer for being able to finish him as fast as he did in that first round was very very impressive and it really showed that part of his game that was lacking throughout his UFC tenure up until that point which was that finishing ability just go out there and get it done so I was really impressed with Bozer in his last fight and it's interesting too because heavyweight division right now there's not a lot of guys outside the top 15 who have you know a lot of hype next to their name but Bozer does feel like he is one of those guys the thing with Pizzoa too so loses the gun pretty quick all right you get what you pay for I mean honest to goodness I think that Cyril Gaon could one day challenge for the UFC heavyweight strap. I He trains with Francis Gano, I know, but some of the stuff that he does in the cage is awesome at heavyweight. Great ground game, can take it there when he wants to. Crazy power, switch stances, the whole nine yards, he's a complete he's package. Good. If he was a baseball player, he's a five-tool player. But we look at this fight, Rafael Pozoa, you look at the fight against Jeff Hughes, really wide stance, lots of power shots, lots of looping shots, some things that you like, 
I don't want him to get into that category of an Anthony Freight Train Hamilton, Christian Colombo, Cyril Asker, where you're stuck in no man's Marcelo land. Goal. You're a 20 to 15 heavyweight. You're not going anywhere and you're just treading water. I don't want him to be that type of guy because I think the ceiling's still kind of there. I mean, a dirty little reach, nice height advantage in this fight. But when I get into some of these things, they're not good for beating a guy like Tanner Bozer. He's already fought guys similar if not a lot better than Pizzoa and beaten them and here's where I get into the odds because again it's short notice it's tough I mean Pizzoa is sitting around a plus 200 underdog Bozer minus 250 on topology at a 755 votes 87 percent going Bozer and this is where incredible recency bias 66 percent saying he's going to win by knockout not. that's a tough one I just I don't see Rafael Pizzoa winning this fight in any circumstance I mean again He's got power. He's got a wide stance. Could he get a flash knockout? Could he throw together some wild combination? Sure, he could. The thing that I don't like, Tanner Bozer, and again, who are you going to train with heavyweight-wise in, in Alberta? I don't know. I mean, he said that he was training at home to get ready for his fight okay. against Felipe Linz, so that is what it is. And I guess, you know, I started the video off by saying going back to Fight Island. His first fight was in Vegas, so he's going to Fight Island for the first time. But here's the trouble. Pizzo is getting ready for Justin Taffa, a guy who kind of fights, you know, he's a kickboxer. You know what you're going to get there. Heavy hands, good footwork, hasn't really translated great in the UFC. You're really pumping Justin Taffa. I know he's got a win over Juan Adams, but it is what it is. But Tanner Bozer in this one, I think he has a style to beat Pizzo. I think he has a style to possibly put him away. I'd sooner go with the safe pick and say decision. But this is Bozer's fight to lose. I agree. I just think he's going to outwork Pizzoa for the majority of the three rounds. The leg kick's going to be really big. The footwork of Bozer, too, at heavyweight is going to give a lot of guys problems. Again, I'm not saying he's going to, you know, go out there and outbox Stipe by any means. But especially guys who are outside that top 15, he's going to have really good success with. Again, I don't know what's going on with, like, Tai Tuivasa. I'd love to see him against Bozer. There's a lot of fun matchups. Certainly Speedbox, a guy who's still out there. Uh, there's still fun fights to be had outside the top 15 at heavyweight. But the names are a little limited. It's not the deepest division out there. Because in light Wait. I don't want for you. Blagoy Ivanov. Yeah, That's the perfect one. That would be a perfect matchup too and it'd be a really exciting fight. So, well, maybe not exciting. Blagoy is going to be in it. But I am excited for the outside of Tanner Broser. I do think he's going to be able to get it done. Probably by decision. I wouldn't think he's going to get the finish. Maybe he does later on in the fight if Pizzoa does start to fade as the fight goes on. But I think this is Bozo's fight to lose. Rafael Pizzoa 2 training with Davi Hamos, who you just saw in the last card. And the forever prospect the Eric Silva Arizona. so I'm really looking forward to this one both going with the Canadian Tanner Bozer you're not going to want to miss this fight and the other 15 so keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks an extended preview of the main event between Robert Whitaker Bobby Knuckles and the gorilla Darren Till keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks Matt and as we always say let's get into it